Ever wondered how evidence is treated in the Indian legal system? Specifically, what happens when evidence comes from someone accused of a crime? Welcome to a deep dive into the Indian Evidence Act of 1872, a cornerstone of the nation's legal framework. A key part of this act, section 27, deals with just that. Evidence derived from an accused person. This seemingly simple section holds a lot of weight and intricacies, in the next few minutes we'll delve into a real-life case that helps illuminate this intriguing aspect of the law. Let's delve straight into the heart of the Indian Evidence Act, 1872, Section 27. This section is a fascinating aspect of Indian Evidence Law. It deals with the extent to which information received from an accused person can be proved. Specifically, it focuses on facts discovered as a result of information from a person accused of an offence, who is in the custody of a police officer. Now here's the twist. This information is admissible, whether it amounts to a confession or not, as long as it relates distinctly to the fact thereby discovered. Seems simple, right? But it's a bit more complex than that. Section 27 is an exception to sections 25 and 26 of the same act. These sections generally protect against self-incrimination and police misconduct. That means that normally, any confession made to a police officer cannot be used against the accused. But Section 27 carves out a unique exception. If the information provided leads to a discovery of a distinct fact, it can be proved in court. This may seem like a legal loophole, but it's an integral part of ensuring justice. It's about balancing the rights of the accused with the necessity of discovering the truth. Now how does this apply in a real-life scenario? Let's explore the case of Ravi Shankar Tandon versus State of Chhattisgarh. In the case of Ravi Shankar Tandon versus State of Chhattisgarh, Section 27 played a pivotal role. This intriguing legal battle began when the judgment and order were passed on the 2nd of January, 2023, by the division bench of the High Court of Chhattisgarh. The court dismissed the criminal appeals of the appellants, among whom was our key player, Ravi Shankar Tandon, tagged as accused number one. The case spun around the interpretation of Section 27 of the Indian Evidence Act, 1872. It was a battleground of legal minds, where the line between guilty and innocent blurred with each statement. The court's role was to determine the relevance of the information provided by the accused while in custody, and whether it led to the discovery of a fact unknown to anyone else. The learned judges held that to bring the case under the purview of Section 27, it was crucial for the prosecution to establish that the information given by the accused led to a discovery. This wasn't just any discovery, it was one that was distinctly within the knowledge of the accused. The court further emphasized that the prosecution needed to prove that before the accused revealed the information, no one else knew about the existence of the dead body at the location where it was eventually found. This case serves as a testament to the power of Section 27. It can be the difference between innocence and guilt, freedom and incarceration. It's not just about what the accused says, but what they reveal. Information that leads to a discovery. A piece of the puzzle that was previously missing. The judgment in Ravi Shankar Tandon v. State of Chhattisgarh is a stark reminder of the importance of the Indian Evidence Act and in particular Section 27. It underscores the need for a careful and precise interpretation of the law and the profound impact it can have on the outcome of a case. This case offers a clear demonstration of how Section 27 can influence a case's outcome. So, what have we learned from our exploration of Section 27 and the case of Ravi Shankar Tandon? Section 27 of the Indian Evidence Act, 1872, is a unique provision that permits the use of certain information provided by an accused person in police custody. This information, whether it be a confession or not, can be proven if it distinctly relates to a fact discovered based on that information. In the Ravi Shankar Tandon case, we saw how this provision was applied. The court emphasized that for Section 27 to apply, the prosecution must show that the information given by the accused led to the discovery of a fact that was previously unknown to others. This case sets a precedent and provides insight into the application of Section 27 in real-life scenarios. Remember, while this provides a good overview, 
always consult with a legal professional for advice related to a specific situation. Until next time, keep questioning and learning.